Ready? Yeah. Jesus. Every <laughs> when every variety of apple you've ever eaten, your Fuji's, your Honey Crisp, Pink Lady, Granny Smith, were all grown from a seed originally. That's how you get a new variety of apple is you grow it from a seed. Think about this. At some point, someone had planted that seed grown the first tree ever of say granny smith got the first fruits and at some point nobody had ever tasted that fruit before that's the crossroads we're at right now with this apple here this is a new variety grown from seed nobody has ever tasted it you see that little mark there that's a wormhole the only thing that has ever tasted this apple is that worm we're going to change that today when we put this apple into gretchen's face and see what happens <laughs> skillcold.com <laughs> Anyone that's been around my channel for a while knows I have this apple breeding project going. Like I said, every new variety of apples grown from a seed, that's how you make new varieties of apples, and here's how that works. So you have two parents, they have different traits, just like people, right? They have different colors, different flavors, different sizes and shapes, and we're gonna add two of those together, make seeds, grow new apple. So in 2015, I took the pollen from this apple, Vixen, and I put it on the flowers of this apple, William's Pride. The next year I took all the seeds from that, I planted them in the ground, they grew trees. Five years later, this is where we're at here. If we like this apple, what are we gonna do? We're not gonna grow it from seeds. I mean, we can grow seeds to make new varieties, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna graft it. So then we have a new variety of apple and we can propagate that out into the world. So Vixen is an apple about this size. It has a pretty unique flavor. That's why I used it. I want that flavor. And looking at this apple, it has some characteristics of Vixen and other apples related to Vixen. I'm really hoping that that flavor, which is why I picked Vixen in the first place, is gonna translate into that. William's Pride is an August ripening apple. These two actually fell off the tree early, I think because this one has a bug bite. There's two green apples left on the tree. I'd be surprised if they don't ripen in August. William's Pride is just an excellent early summer apple. It's like one of the best two early summer apples. It has a great texture, very disease resistant. It almost does never gets a fungal scab, and I don't see any scab on either one of these at all. It would be awesome if this apple also inherited that scab free trait. So the good news is, we have a new apple variety from two very intriguing, excellent apples. It looks good. There's a really good chance it's gonna have the flavor I want from this and a lot of the just high, all high quality stuff from this. Uh, but that's why we take excellent parents and grow seeds from them. You know, I didn't take any of the crappy August ripening apples or even the mediocre August ripening apples. I picked the very best, one of the very best two that I know of. So the ways in which this may not work out are that just like a single flavor or a single attribute does not make a great apple. But just in terms of flavors, you can have flavors that are just are not harmonious. Like they just don't, they don't seem to add up, you know, in your mouth to like just a, a good uh, experience, an overall eating experience. And anything can interfere with that. It could be like lack of acidity. If there's no acid at all, it just sort of falls flat, kind of like cotton candy. If there's too much acid, that could be a problem. The texture could be weird. Uh, there could be cultural issues when we actually start to grow this. There's only one tree and it's only this tall. So as it goes on, the apples may like drop off the tree early. They may be su especially susceptible to insects. They may be susceptible to other diseases. There's a lot of uh, questions yet, but the important part right now is just tasting this, find out what it tastes like, and then we have something to work with because of course that's kind of a, a deal maker or breaker. Are you ready? I'm so ready. All right. <laughs> this one is more ripe. It's definitely more smelly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably overripe. Another thing to remember about this is since the other apples on the tree aren't ripe, they're probably going to be better than this because this ripened early. Like it didn't have time to develop its full natural cycle, you know, ripening potential. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Eat it. We're ready. It's sour. Really? Yeah. Huh. Not Sharp expect that. and sour. Or I'm um, not sour. Oh. Tang or um. Yeah, it is. It's really tangy. Surprisingly, I thought it was going to be sweet and mealy. Me too. Not mealy, but it's sharp. Yeah, it's sharp. But then there's an aftertaste that's sweet. Yeah, but overall flavor-wise, it tastes like a boring mm. apple. It's it tastes like a, a little overripe too. Yeah, I agree. Unimpressive. 
pretty generic apple taste. Yeah. It's kind of sour. Shit. Like you could eat it fine. Yeah, yeah. It kind of tastes like it make good juice. We'll see what this is like, but I think it's going to be worse. A little more well-rounded. Mm hmm. Not as tangy. But no more interesting. No, but a fuller taste maybe. Maybe. It's really sour. Yeah, that's unusual. It's not something I encounter a lot in the trials. In early varieties or just in general? In general. Yeah. yeah there's, it's some, a, it's there's some sharp. At first. There's definitely some sharp apples, like especially the really late ones, the uh, Lady Williams crosses. It's, it could be potential. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, it's, it's so sharp. It's not bad. I mean, like if I was out hiking and I found a tree, I would just eat a bunch of them. That's a good example I like to use. High in vitamin C. Quite possibly. It could make like uh, good cooking, summer cooking apple. Oh. Because I can tell you, it's much better than most apples that are ripe in July. Anything except for um, one of the parents of Williams Pride. Big red thing. What's it called? <laughs> July red. But even it, it's probably even better than that in a lot of ways. It's kind of encouraging though. Well, yeah. Because it's an improvement on early apples. But on, Jul on August apples, then I have to start thinking more about it. But yeah, it could be a good uh, sauce on pie apple for, for summer. Yeah. I'm just making sure it's boring. <laughs> yep, that's boring. <laughs> it's full of punch. Yeah. Well, I do actually do think it'd make a really good pie or sauce. It actually has a lot of flavor. It's just kind of a, a generic apple. Thank you for joining us for this historic moment of disappointment. <laughs> oh shit, man. That was some. supposed to be exciting. Let down. That's how it works though. So much for your 15 minutes fame. We're back for round two. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Another apple ripened and fell in the ground. It was uh, not quite ripe, so it's been sitting around for a couple days, but like the green parts have yellowed up and it looks just, I would guess that this is just about right. You know, like this apple is probably not gonna get any better. Now there's still one on the tree. It is still greener than this. We'll see. Maybe I'll taste that before this video is released too. Let's just give this another chance, see if it's still a complete and utter disappointment. <laughs> no, it really isn't actually. It probably would make a really good early cooking apple and compared to like most July apples, it's really good. But already we had a chestnut crab like yesterday. That was really good. You know, compared to this like clear, you know, cut above type of thing. I kind of expect this will be a little bit better, but probably not a lot. I'm just trying to lower my expectations here. That's a fairly enjoyable tart apple. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like eating a vitamin C drink. The flavor is nice. There's nothing wrong with it. It's less appley because that that taste we had that was just kind of generic appley was overripe apple. This is more sprightly. I almost taste some. Uh, what is it like pineapple or? Isn't there some kind of tropical fruit in there? Definitely. Definitely, huh? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's pineapple or like tropical punch. This is way better. Yeah. Imagine this cooked into a pie too. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have pie now? No, there's not enough. Definitely some tropical flavor. Nothing like real strong, but not as disappointing. No. Not the stellar dessert apple I'm looking for, but very edible. I'd eat one or two of these a day with peanut butter. Peanut butter. Or three. I mean, I want to keep eating it. Yeah, the aromatics are subtle, but they're there. Or it might just be the uh, acidity is making me think pineapple. This is crunchier. Yeah, because it's not overripe. I really think this is just about probably peak. Pineapple tang. Something tang, huh? Hey, that's not such a disappointment. No, it's not bad. Not overwhelming or kind of real exciting, but it's worth eating. Yeah, that's not what I expected after Twang. eating the other apple. Twang. Twang. Well, I'm still eating it. However, I don't recognize much of either parent in the flavor. Thank you for watching. Ah. And we'll see you in the next, when the next one's ripe, maybe. <laughs> the flavor is definitely complex. Much more complex, much less generic. Seem like there's more of a unity to the flavors. It's not like, bam, Agreed. sour.
And Maybe. I don't think it was less sour, though. I think it was just more... Other flavors? I'm not sure what it what it was. I don't feel like it was less sour, though. It's possible, but... Uh, I it's think that's pretty, what I mean by the unity, though. It's still it's pretty sharp. Sour, yeah, but with all, all these other flavors. Better. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Whereas before, it was like, bam, sour, and then not much sour. Mm -hmm. Give me a bunch of them, I'll eat them in August. Good morning, and welcome to round three, tasting this apple, which now has a name, Twang. That just sort of happened spontaneously in round two. Yeah, that's not what I expected after Twang. eating the other apple. Twang. Twang. Unfortunately, Gretchen can't be here with us today because she moved up north to her new place. Everybody wish her luck on her new adventures. And let's taste this thing. Okay, so this came off the tree probably about a week ago. I walked out to the tree. I took the bag off. I looked at it and I thought, that looks ripe. I put my hand underneath it, shook the tree, and it just dropped right off immediately. At the time, this bottom was still a little bit green or mostly green, and now it's mostly yellow. It's been in the fridge that whole time. If anything, I'd say it might be a few days over, but I just been busy with other stuff so let's taste it and find out what's going on oh, okay it's dense it's twangy a uh, good name it's very twangy it's got a lot of tang to it it's not that it's low in sugar or anything it just has a high acid a lot of people actually really like that so that's you know for those type of people that make a good eating apple typically this is about the level of acidity you want in a cooking apple so this would probably make a great summer cooking apple i could eat a bunch of these a couple a day with peanut butter no problem if this was what was available now in july when the first ones fell off it th that could indicate that this has a long season but that's just speculation at this point again we'll find out a lot of this stuff later this would be actually a kind of an exceptional apple but in august in an ideal august i would have chestnut crab which i do have because the birds didn't eat those that are they're not crazy about them williams pride and both of those are good at any season so in august you have apples that you can just say that apple's a, a very good apple and not have to qualify it for a summer apple for a july apple this would be possibly the best one i know of actually possibly but it's probably going to be more of an august ripening apple i'm guessing from about the first two through third weeks of august the first two were overripe and they they were just kind of a generic apple kind of apple-y taste this one is more it's like between that and the second tasting which was like a little bit more complex like some kind of tropical thing going on i can barely detect that here but it's not really jumping out at me this is fine to eat but i think it would have been better right off the tree or a few days ago that's just my best guess it's all the texture is already kind of you know, not amazing, which is, again, typical of any early apple, but not so typical of Williams Pride and Chestnut Crab. So in this season, we really have to compare it to the benchmark apples, those two and um, Carrie Pippin, let's say. But comparing it as a dessert apple to Chestnut Crab and Williams Pride, that's a pretty tough comparison. I mean, those are really exceptional apples. Again, they're good at any season. So yeah, it's still encouraging. We have to remember that the tree is not mature yet. I don't think the basic character of this apple is going to change a lot. Like, it's still going to have uh, the bracing acidity. Like, at certain applications, that's what you want. So I'm not um, discouraged by that. That's actually, it just is what it is. It's just... Um, puts it in a different class of, of apples. It might develop more flavor or have better flavor in different years. That tree is very drought stricken. It's old, it's you know not even as tall as me. It's probably about four and a half feet tall. As the tree develops and it begins to fruit for more years and it gets established, it gets its roots established, it has the ability to hold and store more nutrients and more water and all that stuff and gather more sunlight. These apples could improve uh, quite a bit over time and that's pretty a typical thing that happens. It's certainly not a loser apple. I'm happy to give it a name now so we can just keep track of it. The next steps are to graft it out elsewhere like onto foundation trees so that it can fruit on an established tree like out in the sun and not in these crowded uh, trial rows where it lives right now and to make sure that if that tree dies out there in the trial rows that I have backup copies you know a couple of backup copies and that's what I do with every apple that's interesting enough that comes out of the trial rows. There is some subtlety to the flavor in there but I think what's going to happen is a typical problem with early apples is that they'll be ripe and then you pick them and then like a day on the counter and they're already deteriorating and usually like the texture will start to go soft and the flavor will either 
diminish or it'll become just more of this kind of overripe apple taste. And I think that's going to be true of this as well. Again, that's not surprising because the genes of early apples just tend in that direction. But I think what's going to happen with this apple is it's going to be ready on the tree. My guess is it's going to have a long season of about uh, three weeks, two or three weeks, where it can be used for cooking. There'll be some early ripening specimens that it's best used off the tree and that it's going to go from like slightly complex with a little bit of nuance and subtlety to kind of just an overripe apple taste pretty quick. The texture is already like not amazing. Like it's actually really hard and a little hard to bite into and it's dense, but it's not crispy or crunchy anymore. So figuring out when to pick this and taste it and use it best, you know, is gonna take some time. But I, I'm somewhat encouraged, so we'll just see what happens over the next few years. But I am gonna finish up and I'll see you guys later.